The audio architecture of the AWS features 24 channels feeding two stereo master buses labeled record and mix. In addition to these master buses, there are a further eight track buses, and these can also be utilized for 5.1 surround sound work. Sends from the channels include two stereo cue buses and four mono effect buses. Every channel has its own direct output, primarily for recording, but can also be used as an additional send. Connections are via XLR and balanced quarter-inch jacks, along with D-subs for some of the master section. Other features include a comprehensive monitor panel with the ability to bring in further external sources. The world-famous SSL bus compressor is of course present and provides all the classic audio glue you would expect. Next to that, there are two channel dynamics that can be inserted into the channel of your choice. Also, we have traditional bus master controls for all of the console sends, four stereo returns, fallback sends, the console's TFT screen, which aids DAW control and console setup, comprehensive transport, communication switches for talkback, etc., and of course, channel and master bus metering via a combination of bar graph LED displays and traditional VU meters. All of this in a compact footprint with everything built in. There are no external console components such as console computers and power supplies. Everything is under the hood, and in fact, the AWS draws about as much power as a desktop computer. The AWS 948 features an innovative new dual path channel design. Every channel on the AWS can either be configured for inline tracking, inline mixing, or even as a stereo channel. On the AWS, it is now possible to output the console's onboard TFT screen to an external monitor. Channel configuration can be viewed this way. To configure a channel, simply push the select switch on the channel you wish to adjust. You will then see a graphical representation of that channel and its mode on the console TFT screen. It's also possible via the monitor section miscellaneous control to change modes across a range of channels as on a duality. Let's take a tour down the channel strip. First, we have our input section. This features a super analog design mic input with up to 75 dBs of gain, so it's ideal even for the most particular of ribbon mics. Of course, there's phantom power and also a 20 dB pad. And there's a line input, which can be mono or stereo with gain control and independent left-right phase reversal. Below the input section is our EQ, which is a four band parametric along with continuously variable high pass filter. This is a new EQ design using state variable filters. We've met the challenge to firstly ensure accurate left-right matching, after all the ear is very sensitive to such discrepancies, and secondly to provide the familiar and well-loved SSL E and G curve EQ characteristics developed on our legacy consoles. This new design matches the response of those circuits exactly. We're also able to offer a great new feature in that the high and low shelving and bell bands and the two fully parametric mid bands can be independently switched between E and G curve responses. This provides a wonderful sound sculpting tool, allowing the air and weight of the G series to be combined with the precision and accuracy of the E curves for the most versatile of EQs. This is the best of all possible worlds. Every channel features an insert point, which can be either mono or stereo, Perfect for your favorite vintage rack mount processors. The new stereo SSL x rack dynamics are a perfect fit. You can even move the insert point pre-EQ if you wish. Each channel can center two stereo Q buses and four mono effects buses. On the console rear is a Q and effects bus inject connector that allows additional signals to access the same Q and effects destinations. This allows a send from the desk to be combined with a send from the box and sent to the same outboard processor. At the bottom of the channel strip is our panning control and routing to the main master record and mix buses. It's also possible to work in 5.1 surround sound by using the track buses. Track buses 1 to 6 conform to left, right, center, LFE and left and right surround speakers. The AWS monitor also handles 5.1 surround. The AWS faders are the highest quality 100mm moving faders and are unique in that they can control both an analog path as well as an external DAW's fader levels. Each channel on the AWS 948 can operate in one of three modes and it's very easy to configure a channel or a range of channels. If we go into the channel display, 
Then by using the select switches on each channel, we can see the console's TFT screen reflecting the setup for that channel or channels. So let's look at the three different modes, starting with inline track. Obviously, in a tracking mode, the source can be a mic or line signal. Channel input is the primary path, and the monitor return from the recording device is the secondary path. So the channel's large fader is acting as the monitor level control, and the VPOT is the channel output level control, providing a very traditional inline tracking setup similar to SSL legacy consoles. Pressing the flip button swaps the VPOT to control the monitor return and the fader to control the tracking sent to the DAW. It's also possible to monitor either the channel output or the DAW monitor return. A great feature within this is that the channel's processing can be assigned either to the channel input path or the monitor return path from the recorder. The Qbus normally picks up the input source signal, usually for feeding headphone mixes to the artist. There are a couple of exceptionally useful SSL features that will significantly ease your recording session. Auto monitoring overrides the DAW return and locks to the transport tally. So when your DAW is in play, the console monitors the monitor return path. When you drop into record, the console automatically switches to monitor the channel input path. And remember, as it's analog, there is zero latency. SuperQ provides automatic QSend source switching between the two channel paths input and return by following the DAW transport status. The great thing about this is that when you're using your stereo cues as headphone sends, it allows full no latency overdub and record monitoring. So a sum of both paths is heard when the DAW is in play and only the channel input when the DAW is in record or stopped. This is a great feature that emulates the way the legacy consoles worked when doing drop-ins on tape. SuperQ is a great feature because it makes the drop-in experience seamless from the perspective of the performer. In the run-up to the drop-in, the performer hears a mix of their recorded performance and their live performance. When you drop in to record, they obviously only hear themselves. And for the performer, this allows them to match their previous performance exactly so that when the drop-in occurs, it really is seamless. The two other options you can see on the TFT screen are QFMON follows the channel pan, allowing the monitor path panning to be replicated on the QBus. EFX Chop is where you can assign one of your effect sends to control the level to the channel output. The next channel configuration mode is Inline Mix. This mode features dual line inputs. This is the console's default channel mode, but there are a couple of useful twists. Firstly, you can configure the channel as a single source with the second path acting as an additional send. The other mode is found by engaging the channel's return switch. Each source can be routed to either stereo master bus and the level control for the secondary path is via the VPOT. Routing is accomplished by the dedicated rec and mix switches. And the secondary path can borrow the cue pan. So your stereo cue pan pot becomes your secondary path pan pot. And the panning of the stereo cue follows the primary pan pot. It's also possible to link the solos as well as the solo isolate between the large fader and VPOT paths if so desired. Now we get to the good bit. It's possible to assign the channel processing resources between the two paths. So for example, here you can see the channel's EQ section toggling between the two paths. And of course all these other resources uh, such as dynamics and effect sense. Also either path can be assigned to the console track buses along with a useful visual indicator. QFollows channel engages the channel pan, useful for headphone or cue mixes as it picks up the already determined stereo panorama. If you want to print back to the workstation at a different level to the channel fader, you can use the EFX chop feature to allow one of your cue or effect send levels to control the level to the channel output. And of course both channel paths are automatable via SSL's AWS automation. Our final channel mode is perhaps particularly useful for modern production. The first thing to note is that the input is a true stereo line input. The EQ section switches into being stereo, as does the insert point. The real magic comes with the width and balance control that you can use on your stereo signal. The VPOT acts as a differential balance control. So what's really cool is that the scribble strip displays the offset in dBs between the left and right, while the channel pan functions as a width control. The width control has a center detente. Negative values increase the perception of a mono center, while positive values provide significant width enhancement. 
In stereo channel mode, the effect sends and channel output are a mono sum of the stereo source. The 48 input thing is, is a really big deal. I mean, just the fact that you can get 48 inputs in this, in this frame um, just makes it absolutely ideal for things like the higher end of project studios, um, writing studios, things like that, where you really do get a lot of power in a very small, physically a very small footprint.